All right, we're back. We're on page 176. We are talking about hyperbolas, conics in general. Uh, we're going to do some different types of problems now. So let's see what we're getting. We know that the foci are negative 2, 2, and negative 2, 8. And we know that the eccentricity, try and do it looking at the computer instead of at the iPad. I feel like that would be better, but I'm not good at that. Uh, the eccentricity is 5 fourths. So we know it's a hyperbola because the eccentricity is 5 fourths. I mean, the problem also tells you that. Um, but if the eccentricity is greater than one, it has to be a hyperbola. So how are we going to do this? Well, uh, we know that eccentricity is definitely C over A, but that doesn't mean that C is equal to five and A is equal to four. That means the ratio of C to A is five to four. And that's a thing that we need to worry about. So uh, the other information, the foci, basically tells us C, right? So we know we know the center and we know C because we know both of the foci. So uh, let's see, if I were to start to plot this, um, I don't know, let's, let's do our like fake axes here. So these are not the coordinate axes, these are just gonna be the, I guess the transverse and the conjugate axis, um, or at least the lines that contain those. So negative two, two, and negative two, eight. So let's say you are negative two, two. Let's say you are, negative two, eight, and these are both foci. And so then the midpoint of that, uh, eight plus two is 10 divided by two is five. So this is gonna be negative two, five. So I automatically know that the distance from the focus to the center is C. So C is equal to three. Okay, so I now know that C is equal to three and I know that C over A is equal to five. So I can work with that. So if uh, three over A is equal to five over four. Um, so I feel like at some point I said C over A equals five in the middle of that. I don't know if that's true or not. Like when I, you do that, like I, I do that all the time where I'm like constantly replaying what I've said in my head to see if it like made any sense. And uh, I think that maybe didn't. Potentially. All right, so what is A equal here? Uh, 12 fifths. So A is 12 fifths. So what are we looking for? The equation. All right, so since we're looking for the equation, we need to know what B is. We already know because the foci are on a vertical line. Uh, this is gonna be vertical like this, which means it's eating the Y axis, which means that Y is gonna go first in the equation. So we know that, we know the center is uh, I don't know why I'm summarizing before I find B. We know this, and then we know that C squared equals A squared plus B squared, because this is a hyperbola. So C squared is nine equals uh, 144 over 25 plus B squared. So what's nice is that we, we only need B squared, so we don't have to like, it's not like that bad, maybe. So this will be uh, nine times 25 is 225, and then minus 144 over 25 is equal to uh, B squared. Is that like some kind of triple up there? 12 and 15 maybe? 12, 15, I mean, I'm sure that it is, but I can't think of it right now. It's too early. I don't know what time you're doing this, but uh, it's too early for me, 681. Oh, 81, yeah. So 9, 12, 15, oh my God, it's a three, four, five triangle. Uh, okay, so B squared, B squared is 81 over 25, unless I got that wrong. All right, so our equation, we said that because uh, the foci are on a vertical line, Y is gonna come first. So it's gonna be Y minus five squared minus something. Uh, x plus 2 squared, and that'll equal 1, and then over, over. All right, so A is this, so we're going to put 144 over 25, and then B squared is this, so we're going to put 81 over 25. I think that's right. Um, I'm going to check it on the calculator, like, right away, so let's see. Go here, and then uh, what's the best way to check? I think I'm gonna add a graph page. I mean, I'm just gonna do it graphically, right? Because the graph uh, has the information. So option three, and then option three, and then hyperbola. 
And then uh, I'm thinking that it's south north, according to uh, the way the, the Inspire names it. I'm going to put five. And then remember, it's going to square it for you, so you have to put 12 fifths. And then negative two. And then it's going to square it for you, so you put nine fifths. And press enter, and I'll see if, uh, see if the information I was given matches what I found. So menu six, option nine is to analyze. Uh, let's find the foci and see if they're the given foci. And they are, and let's find the eccentricity. Menu six, nine, and eccentricity is option eight. And five fourths. So we got, uh, stay. Okay, um, so we got it. All right, let's try another one. See, see if we can keep doing this. So I've mentioned a couple times, I think, that like when you're given problems about conics, it's all about like what's the minimum information the problem can give you and you can still solve it. And the, it's, it's a puzzle. There's like a lot of different pieces of information that you can know. So you just gotta walk in knowing you know, everything, everything you possibly can. So I know eccentricity is C over A. It's a ratio of C to A. So that doesn't mean that C is 13 and A is eight. It just means that C divided by A will give you 13 eighths when you simplify it. Uh, I'm gonna put in my fake axes not really fake, they're the transverse and conjugate axes to help me to figure out what's going on. So six, one and 12, one. So six, one, 12, one. So you're like, if you know both vertices, you know the center, if you know both foci, you know the center, if you know both conjugate vertices, you know, uh, Co, I'm sorry, co-vertices. Conjugate vertices? Is that even a thing? Is that what the co there is for? It very well might be. What the heck? That was like a, I, I didn't mean to say that, but I may have learned something by saying it. I wonder if that's true. Probably. Uh, all right, so you're a vertex, you're a vertex. So the center we know is at 9, 1, um, and therefore we know that A is 3, because you can go 3 this way, or you could go 3 this way. All right, so if we know that A is three, we know that C over three is 13 over eight. So we know that C is gonna be uh, 39 over eight, crummy numbers. Uh, all right, so then C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Do I know 39 squared? I don't think I do. So when I have to square a number like 39, I'll do like 40 minus one squared because I know like that's gonna be 40 squared. I multiply them together times two, so minus 80 and then plus one. So what is that? One, five, two, one. One, five, two, one, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna end up using a calculator anyway, but uh, so I think I get one, five, two, one over 64 minus, uh, let's say nine times 64 over 64 is B squared. Nine times 64 is uh, three squared times eight squared. So it's 24 squared. So if you wanted to, you can do like uh, 25 minus one squared, which would be 625, multiply them together times two minus 50 and then plus one. So five, seven, six. I should have, I, I think I actually do know that one whatever. Uh, so now I'm doing 1521 minus 576. Oh, you got to like borrow everywhere. 511 is 4 and now that's 14. So really it's 9. 945. I think 945 over 64. I think that's B squared. I suppose I could check that. You know what? Let's just go for it. And then when we check it, we'll see how it did. So the center, I know that X is going to come first because these are on a horizontal line. So it's eating the X axis. So X goes first. That's how I always remember that. Um, so it's going to be X minus nine squared and minus, we got Y minus one squared equals one. Uh, A is three. So we're just going to put nine here because you got to square it. And then we only solve for B squared. So 945 over 64. All right, should we check this? I mean, we should definitely check this. Let's see. I'm gonna be impressed if I got this one right. Arithmetic, it's, a, it's like super early on a Saturday morning when I'm recording this, so that's my excuse. Uh, I don't know what you'll be using as your excuse. 
Uh, I like to make excuses for why I mess things up in case you haven't noticed that. All right, here we go. Uh, nine, and then I got to put three, and then uh, one, and then I have to put the square root of nine, four, five over eight because it's going to square it for me. And let's get the eccentricity and the vertices. So menu six, nine, um, vertices. Big, big moment here. Six, okay, all right. And then menu six, nine, um, what are we doing? Eccentricity, it's a moment of truth. 13 over eight, yes. Okay, so we got it, nice. Um, so let me share the iPad again. I don't know what's left on this page. Uh, and maybe I should have looked ahead of time, but I did not. So uh, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna stop the video here, I'll come back and I will finish this page in the next video. Uh, oh, it looks like we're just doing a similar, sort of similar problems, it's like a very similar idea, but anyway, next video, so don't worry about it right now. Worry about it in like one second when you hit play on the next one. So, see you there.